What's up guys, Penguin Overlord here, and in today's video we are going to cover semi-auto sniper rifle setup and employment. Now this is a topic that a lot of people have been asking me over at Dark Dally's Discord server because with my current semi-auto sniper rifle setup I've been able to make some pretty long range shots with ease. That's actually kind of why I'm here at the Holy Malka base where I like going to this base because I can do a lot of longer range shooting here fairly easily with my current sniper rifle setup. So this, let's go talk about this because people I've gotten several comments from people asking how I'm able to do this, how I set up my gun, and it's actually quite, once I've got it set up, it's actually quite easy. So, for this video, uh, I'm using the SR-25 as my example because that's currently my favorite semi-auto sniper rifle. Outside of the BFG-50A, which is kind of, it's a 50 caliber sniper rifle, so it's its own separate category, um, so I don't really count that. Um, talking about all the regular sniper rifles chambered in 308 this is my current favorite it does the most contrary to what the stat bars do uh show you it does the most damage out of all the sniper rifles in my gameplay it takes least bullets to kill people and take out generators uh, it usually takes two shots to take out a generator with this one the other ones it takes more uh you can go ahead and test that feel free uh it takes less damage takes less shots to kill enemies obviously and uh just judging by all the bullet drop tests other people such as dark dally have done this has the least bullet drop out of the non 50 caliber semi-auto snipers so let's go over all the parts as usual and why i picked the parts and uh yeah we'll talk about that so stock uh most of the time you'll get the stock butt stock so you won't really there won't really be anything different with that, but I like having the compensated buttstock whenever I can equip it. Same with assault rifles, even though it doesn't really happen a whole lot. It always with like the Mark 17 and the uh, G36C. I like the compensated buttstock because it does reduce uh, that recoil climb a little bit, which does make it nicer for what I want to use with a semi-auto sniper. And actually, let's cover... I should have done this first, but let's cover why how you're going to employ a semi-auto sniper rifle so and the reason why i'm covering semi-auto sniper rifles instead of sniper rifles in general because um because you'd use a, a, a bolt action sniper rifle differently from a semi-automatic sniper rifle uh i generally don't prefer bolt action sniper rifles i think i covered this in my general purpose loadout but i'll cover it again here with bolt action rifles, you gotta rotate that bolt back and forth before you can fire another shot, which is kinda slow. So with a semi-auto sniper rifle, I wanna be able to take out multiple people in stealth at once, as much as I reasonably can. You could usually take out anywhere between two to three people. Uh, four would be a little bit too much, I think, um, for a sniper rifle, because then you're gonna start getting people running off and you're gonna alert the base. Uh, it, it really depends, but I think for a semi-auto sniper rifle at distance, you can take out people, uh, two to three people. Also, this is basically, with a semi-auto sniper rifle, this is my main tool in clearing out a base in stealth. Um, especially if I'm taking out targets at distance. And I want to be able to do that quietly, so that way I don't get detected, or delay the amount of time I get detected. So that's kind of like why I use this for and it's also a fairly versatile tool because if my with the scope that I'm using which we'll talk about I can also kind of use this as a fighting implement if things go loud not my first choice but I can make it work so let's go back to the parts again now the scope this is going to be a long discussion guys please bear with me because um I've gone through quite a, an evolution with scope choice now I used to be a big fan of the T5XI tactical scope. It's 6 magnification, so it's the highest amount of magnification in the game. Obviously, it increases the accuracy and range stats and all that good stuff. Um, actually, it doesn't seem to increase range stat. Well, maybe it does, and you just can't see it. Whatever, not the point. So, this used to be my favorite scope. And I hate that this freaking Ubisoft did not fix the night vision scope. So. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So obviously with this scope, you've got 
a wide field of view, which I like. And I found that it's plenty accurate for most um, for most engagement distance in Wildlands. Like making a 450 meter shot like with this sniper over here isn't purely necessary in Wildlands. There's not a whole lot of opportunities to get to do that. Most engagements are going to be 300 meters and in. So this scope does work fine. Here's why I don't really favor that anymore and kind of go back to the G28 uh, Weaver don't interrupt me and why I've gone back to G28 um, which I used to hate because of the scope shadow that this scope gives you and obviously less magnification see you don't get as wide as a field of view with that scope compared to T5XI but here's the problem with the T5XI and in order to demonstrate the problem with T5XI, I'm going to, we need to talk briefly about how sniping works in this game. And it's really not that complicated. These... Should I murder these rebels? Because they're interrupting my video. Yeah, screw it. Sorry guys, just got... Frag out! Come in here gunfire is bothering me. Kill confirmed. Okay, let's get back to business. Uh, let's not just crouch because I'll activate optical camo. Okay, but here's... Let's get back to how sniping works. You don't have... It, this isn't a sniping simulator. Sniping simulator. All you really need to worry about with sniping is elevation. Where you need to hold at distance because there is bullet drop in this game. Uh, there isn't... You don't have to worry about windage. So you don't have that factoring into your shot. So all you really need to do when you're sniping is figure out where you need to hold. And what I found with the T5XI is that past 400 meters, I couldn't really figure out where to hold that well. Cause you see all these uh, these markings here, these, uh, these I don't know what the hell you call them. These, you know, the, the bars that, you have, that are down here. Um, I couldn't really figure out which uh, where you exactly needed to hold beyond 400 meters, and I came to that realization um, when I was playing. I rolled up another character in Fallen Ghosts, and I was trying to take out a sniper out uh, of the sorry, the uh, cloaked crossbow guy from I think it was like 500 meters away. Just to see if I could, and I just had so much trouble doing that. I got a target carrying submachine guns. Yes, yes, he is. I had so much trouble doing that because I didn't really know where to hold and there's no real good marking. The markings here are just too far spaced out to really get a good zero and figure out where you need to hold. It's, you're kind of guessing with this scope. Now, with these other scopes and why I chose the G28, actually goes back to, um, I give credit to a user on Dark Dally's Discord server. His Username was Doc McSalty. He played Wildlands on Xbox, and what he did was he made range cards for different scopes, like the G28 and the Tars 101. Those were the two scopes I remember him doing that. I don't exactly recall if he did one for the SR25. I think he did. I'm just for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna say he did. Um, and he also did those for like the Tar 21 for like all the sniper rifles. So he actually did the work and figured out where you needed to hold for. Um, for each scope for uh, the exact distance. So, for the G28... Unidad bird approaching, stay down. Excuse me while I flip down my NVGs. This is really annoying you saw it fix it. Okay. Alright. We're good. Okay, so, we're here's good. the thing we're with good. the, uh... Okay, let me use this guy over here as an example. So, Okay. It's 15. So when I hold on a target directly at him, that's generally good from 0 to 200 meters, generally. Now, this hash mark at the bottom of the illuminated crosshair is 250 meters, from what I've found. Then up here is 300 meters. This guy's moving, so it's going to mess up. And then it just keeps going 100 meters down each hash mark, so that's the phrase I was looking for really starting to get on my nerves. Don't interrupt my video. Uh, quality for professionalism here on my that channel. Let's use this guy since he's not moving. So, once again, 0 to 200, 250, 300, that circle, 
400, that dash mark, and then 500, and then so on. 600, presumably 700. I haven't actually gone that far with this. I generally keep it, um, I don't usually shoot past 600 meters, because then the game won't render the, the uh, enemy, and then you have to back out and do that stuff. That, that would be a fun video, I think, to do. I might do that sometime, but, um... But generally, with this sniper rifle, I can hit anything at any range with it that I can see within the game. And just to prove that, I'm just going to take a couple shots here. Actually, let me take off my suppressor. We'll get back to uh, setup, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you how easy this is with this setup. So, once you know where to hold with a sniper rifle, you can basically hit anything. So, let me just get this all lined up perfectly. Easy. So, oh, that's another thing I need to clarify. So basically, if you need to make a shot in between those hard, uh, those hard uh, rounded numbers, like say 300 to 400, you just kind of hold in the middle there. And no, I'm not going to shoot him because he's too far. But this guy's in the way. Hmm, who can we take out? Now I'm not sure if this is headshot accurate. I've done shooting with this. I don't think it's exactly headshot accurate, but it'll generally get you pretty close. This guy's come they're all coming up, so this is a good spot. Um, let's take out this guy. Uh, no, he's moving. I Okay, that guy moves, so again, we're going to show you just right in the middle there. Going to wait till he passes by just to make sure he doesn't alert the base cuz that would really slow down my video. And I'd have to edit it out, and that would be a pain in the butt. But, yep, that guy's dead. Uh, this re this tower's in the way. I don't know if I can hit him. All right, let's hit this guy. Yep, he's dead. Just need to refine it because Wildlands doesn't give you much magnification, so you kind of have to be exact here. Uh. Nope, this guy's moving. I really want to hit that sniper over there, just to demonstrate to you how long range you can hit people. Uh, once you know where exactly you need to hold. Actually, let's take out this generator right here, and show you just how few shots with the SR-25 you need to take to take out the generator. One. Two. Okay, I think I didn't hit it right, because I know it takes two. It's just sometimes, it, with the fences, it gets weird. Three. Okay. They got no juice. So two to three shots. I got him on the alert. All right. So that's how. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't take that many shots. But anyway, let's get back to setup real quick. We'll maybe we'll do some shooting later with the SR25. But let's get back to setup. So that's why I picked the G28 scope because I know where to hold with this thing, and I can basically hit any enemy in the game with that scope and with the attached parts, because the parts do matter, like, with this exact setup and with the G28 scope, that's how you get those results. So, obviously, semi-auto only trigger for most of the sniper rifles. For the Mark 17, let me pull that up real quick. The Mark, not the Mark 17, the Mark 14. It's a little bit different. I just have it set up in my standard semi-auto mode, but um, I like using the burst trigger. Because if you put the Mark 14 on full auto, it's really hard to control. Even if you've got optimal recoil control with like a shorter barrel and the Comp B4, it's still not very good. It's not an assault rifle level of recoil control. So I like having a burst because then all the rounds are sort of grouped together. That's kind of the exception though uh, for burst weapons. I usually don't use that a whole lot. But for the Mark 14, it makes sense. Anyway, let's get back to this video because this is running along long enough as it is obviously extended mag that's a good thing especially if things go loud which is another advantage of the uh, g28 scope is that i can switch to the red dot and if i run out of ammo for my assault rifle for whatever reason which usually doesn't happen but if i'm just screwing around and just shooting people that come up here uh that can happen it doesn't happen often but uh, it can happen. Just spotted one so, with submachine this is guns. a nice feature. It's not necessary, but it's nice. Especially if you're running a semi-auto sniper rifle. 
and you can you can actually use that as a loud gun if you wanted to now next up this is important v44 grip which i know it doesn't make sense because compared because it takes down your accuracy a little bit especially when you're using a shift short angle grip and I used to think, oh, maximizing accuracy, that's the best thing you need to do with a sniper rifle, right? Not necessarily, and here's why. So, so one, I don't think the SR-25 is going to be the best sniper rifle to demonstrate this with. Let me actually turn off night vision because it's daytime now, but take a look at this. You're getting a significant amount of recoil, which... Um, well, the SR-25 is pretty good with recoil, but you did notice there's a bit of a jump there. And with what I use a semi auto sniper rifle for, which is clearing out multiple enemies in stealth, and also taking up a, taking a, up a follow-up shot if you need to, like if you don't hit with the first round because you're not perfect with the sniper rifle, which, hey, I sometimes miss shots too. Uh, that's another good thing about semi auto sniper rifles compared to a bolt-action rifle. But... So as you can see here, it's a bit jumpy. And I'll demonstrate it with another uh, sniper rifle that has more recoil in a minute. But once I put that Vorkrip V4 on it, that reduces recoil. Yeah, if you shoot a lot, it's going to give you some bullet deviation. But it returns back to its original point much faster. Now let me pull up the, uh, the G28, which I used for a while and I don't really like anymore. Uh, let's put on that shift short angle grip. Let's fire three shots. Quite a bit of recoil. Let me get the right part. V4 grip. Much better. So yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're going to have to worry about side-to-side -side movement, especially uh, with the V4 grip, because it kind of creates some instability um, with, uh, excuse me, not vertical recoil, horizontal recoil. That's kind of like the one bad thing about that grip, because it takes down your accuracy maybe a little bit too much, but for what you need to do with a sniper rifle that's a semi auto sniper rifle, you're not going to be generally doing mag dumps with it, so it's fine. Uh, you're just going to get those quick follow-up shots, and then if things go loud, you can always switch to your assault rifle, which I gen or other loud gun, but I generally recommend the assault rifle. Anyway, next up, uh, rangefinder. There's really no point to using uh, the Atpil and the laser dot uh, laser sights for a sniper rifle because I want to decrease that bullet drop as much as possible. Just so we can get better holdovers, so we don't have to like aim as high over distance. Uh, and that that rangefinder does, excuse me, um, it does reduce bullet drop. It, it does it does bring that bullet drop a little bit higher. So now with the rangefinder and the standard barrel, which uh, that's the longest barrel you can equip on the SR25, I personally recommend equipping the longest barrel. You can on a semi auto sniper rifle for more damage and for just less bullet drop. With all these factors combined, that's how I'm able to get all these holds where I can just. The sniper keeps moving, but where I can just make those hits at long distance uh, with not much time taken up. You know, just a little bit of time just to refine the aim because I don't really want to miss. But. It really is fairly simple in doing that. Now, last part, because I'm using this gun in stealth, generally, I'll use a suppressor. A Comp V2, um, I generally don't, because I do use this in fairly closer ranges when I'm infiltrating a base and I need to take out like a sniper somewhere else. Uh, I don't want to restrict that to loud only. I want to have options if I need to make the bullet travel faster, which is one thing in this game where um, if you fire a shot suppressed, the bullet takes longer to travel than, uh, than uh, when it's unsuppressed, which that's not real life, but whatever. That's not important right now. Point is... Point is... Um, 
having a comp v2 on your gun is not that much of an advantage now maybe if you're doing mag dumps on it and you had the v4 grip then yeah i could see the point i sometimes actually use the mark 14 as a loud gun when i pair it with a shotgun but that's kind of a niche sort of use generally for a semi auto sniper rifle i'm using it in stealth so i need it to be suppressed if i can go if i need to go loud i can always take it off and have that extra bullet velocity but that's it for now that's based that basically covers my semi auto sniper rifle setup that's how i set it up for success and believe me you get some serious success with this As I say this, okay, are you seeing this, guys? Okay, I say They're that. Watch out. The LT's trying to run. Okay, I say that, and I alert the base. That that that's been weird for me. Just uh, breathe easy. Just uh, hitting that guy. I I've had I've been running into issues, and I don't know why. Uh, cause I'm on. The thing with sniping in this game, uh, I mean, I'm on the fairly same level, elevation level, but if you're going up at an extremely high angle like this, if, especially if you're like seven, several hundred meters up, then you're going to have some issues. Uh, I mean, your holdovers won't work like they normally would. So you kind of have to adjust your aim. But as you can see, once I... Uh, get the right hold over I just made that 400 shot with just barely even trying let me hit this guy too uh, I should take off my suppressor shouldn't I yep dead no problems whatsoever let's kill the snipe oh shit ah he saw the body and then he didn't do anything well let's kill him uh, there, he's dead. No problem. But yeah, that's how I set up my semi-auto sniper rifle for success. And believe me, I'm pretty successful with the thing. I've gotten really good with the holdovers. Obviously, you could use any semi-auto sniper rifle you like. but um, And as long as you know the holdovers and where you need to hold, you'll be able to do the same thing that I do with any sniper, sniper rifle you want. So if you want to use G28, the Dragonov, the uh, Mark 14, you can do what I do. But that's it. I'm going to end this video now because it's already pretty dang long. Probably should cut this down. Nah, I won't edit it. I'll just release it straight up. But yeah, that's my semi auto sniper rifle video. Thank you all for watching. I'm Penguin Overlord, and I will catch you all next time.